Have you ever been told that BAs don't build data models? And do you fear that because you're not a database professional that you can't build a model? My name is Stephanie Lockman Doucette, and I would like to reassure you that business analysts are the absolutely best professionals to prepare data models. Welcome to Progera, the channel dedicated to practical perspectives in business analysis and IT project management. In this video, I will share my practical perspectives on what is a data model, two types of data models, three levels of data models, and why BAs are great data modelers. And to help you understand why BAs are such great data modelers, I'm going to toss in a few practical examples, including how to construct a data model and the concept of cardinality. Now, before we get started, remember, if you like what you hear, click that thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to hear more practical perspective from Progera, click that subscribe button. Okay, so let's get going. Wikipedia describes a data model as an abstract model that organizes elements of data and standardizes how they relate to one another and to the properties of the real world. Now that's a fair definition, but it really doesn't give a great picture. The Babok describes a data model as the entities, the classes, or data objects relevant to a domain, the attributes that are used to describe them, and the relationships amongst them to provide a common set of semantics for analysis and implementation. Now, that's a better definition, but it still feels overly complex. And when I hear that phrase, semantics for analysis, that triggers alarm bells that this must be translated into business executive speak. So I'd like to define the data model as a concept with three simple components. First and foremost, the data model must describe entities or things that are relevant to a domain. In a business context, this may be a customer, a process, an input, an output, or any other construct. In another context, look at the domain. What are the objects, the tangible, practical things, or the virtual constructs that are key components of that domain? The second component of a data model are the attributes of those entities. Attributes are those characteristics that are used to describe the entity. For example, if you were to describe the attributes of a family pet, you could say that it is described by its name, breed, gender, color, weight, and date of birth. The third component of a data model are those relationships between the entities. I'll present some examples about the different types of relationships shortly. Now let's review a practical example, a quick demonstration of how simple it is to generate a high-level data model. Let's consider an e-commerce company that is selling books, both hardcover, softcover, and e-books. Now think about all the different entities, the concepts, the constructs that exist in this business model. This company will have a set of customers and publishers the customer will generate orders, and on the website, the company will provide some biographical information about the authors. Together, these five elements are the entities of the objects in our model. In a real e-commerce model, there would be several other entities, but for our example, five will do just fine. Now let's think about the attributes of these objects. A book will have a title, an author, and a publisher and perhaps data about publishing dates and the unit price. There are many other attributes that could, could be considered, but for our example, that'll be enough. So how does one describe a publisher? Well, it has a name and an address and some information about a key contact. Customers have a name, address, email address, and telephone number. Again, in a real commercial scenario, you may want to model other attributes. You may want to distinguish between billing address and shipping address, and you may want to list several email addresses and telephone numbers. How these ideas can be modeled will be discussed in another video. And of course, there are those attributes to be considered of the authors and the orders. After you have identified the objects and their attributes, it's time for the third component of the data model, those relationships. It's easy enough to draw lines between the objects to say that there is a relationship between those objects. But how do you describe that relationship? That 
that's where we take a little detour to talk about cardinality. Wikipedia provides two definitions for cardinality. In mathematics, the cardinality of a set is measured by the number of elements of that set. The cardinality of a join between two tables is the numerical relationship between rows of one table and another. Common cardinalities include one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. The first definition describes the concept according to set theory. The second one describes the concept relevant to database tables. Once again, I find these definitions are not presented in business speak, so I'll translate them for you. Cardinality describes the relationships between two entities. That's simple enough. But the key point to realize is that re these relationships need to be described in both directions. Now, it's time for a little bit more practical example. There are essentially two types of relationships. And of course, there's a few variations on those primary types. The first relationship says it may be described as one to one. For example, one person has one and only one birth certificate. Going the other direction, one birth certificate belongs to one and only one person. The second type of common relationship is described as one to many. For example, one publisher may produce many books or one book is published by only one publisher. Now for some variation, a relationship may be described as one to zero or one. For example, a person may or may not have one driver's license, but one driver's license always belongs to one person. Second variation is described as one to zero or many. For example, a customer may have zero or many book orders, but one book order belongs to only one customer. And yet there is another variation. This one is identified as many-to-many -many and is perhaps the most complex relationship to model. Consider the fact that many customers have purchased many books. This could be decomposed to the fact that one customer has purchased many books and one book has been purchased by many customers and thus it's many-to-many. -many. There are other variations, but I won't go into those today. That can be a subject for another video. So now that you understand cardinality, how do you describe cardinality in the model? Yes, there are various notations, crow's feet, UML, they're common in some organizations, and there's the narrative format that I have just demonstrated that is also acceptable. In my perspective, you can always use the specific notation to describe cardinality, but notation might confuse those that are not experts. The role of a business analyst is to provide clarity, not to confuse people. So in my opinion, I prefer narrative text instead of the notations. If you'd like, you can use narrative text in addition to the notation because narrative text makes the model accessible to a wider range of stakeholders. Now let's return to our practical example of constructing a data model because after you build a model, you must test that model. Recall the model that we built earlier. Let's take a look at each one of those relationships. One book has one publisher, one publisher has many books. That relationship's okay. One book can have many authors. One author can write many books. As modeled, that relationship is not so good. We need to create an intermediate entity to help us model that many-to-many -many relationship. Now let's look at the next one. One customer can have many orders. One order can have one customer. That relationship's okay too. One order can have many books. Oops, we've detected a problem with our model. In a typical commerce solution, it is possible to order multiple items on one order. And thus we need to adjust our model to enable this concept. We need to separate the concept of order from order line and introduce a relationship between the order and order lines. In our example, an order line will contain the attributes needed to describe the order for one book and the order must contain the list of all of those items that are purchased by the one customer at a single time. For example, consider a customer named Bella. She would like to order three books for her two children. She wants to order two diaries and one storybook. The storybook would appear as one line item and the diaries would appear as another line item with a quantity of two. Bella's order contains two order lines, each with a unique description and a unique unit price. The entire order reports the subtotal of the items, 
the tax applied, any coupon cones that are applied, and other details. So there you have it, a relatively simple e-commerce data model. Now, if you happen to have extensive data modeling experience, you will recognize that there are other ways that this model could be presented. For this example, I have chosen to keep things simple. In future videos, we'll talk about more advanced modeling techniques. So, thus far, we've talked about what is a data model, the concept of cardinality, and I've demonstrated the process for constructing a data model. Now let's turn our attention to the remaining three items that I promised to you at the outset of this video. Let's start with a discussion of the two types of data models. The two most common types of data models are relational and dimensional. Yes, there's other types, but those are the two most frequently used in a business context. A relational model is used by transactional systems. It is designed to support fast processing and fast write, and thus there's no or minimum data duplication. Information that can be derived or calculated will be done so when it is required. It is in a format that's commonly referred to as third normal form. A dimensional model is used by reporting systems or business intelligence systems. It's designed for fast recall and thus data must be repeated or duplicated in order to support fast read. Calculations are minimized. It is in a format referred to as a star schema. The relational model is the type of model that we demonstrated today. The star schema will be demonstrated another day. Now let's talk about the three levels of data models. First, there is the conceptual model. It identifies entities and relationships, but no attributes. It may describe the cardinality of the relationship, but that's not required. The most important thing is to realize that the model is technology independent. It doesn't know or care whether you're storing the information in SAP or Oracle or a spreadsheet or a filing cabinet. It represents the business concepts and the business relationships. And thus, these types of models can and should be prepared by business analysts. The second type of model is the logical model. It extends the conceptual model to include attributes associated with the entities and the cardinality of those relationships. Again, the model must be technology agnostic because it's representing data and information in business terms. These types of models can and should be prepared by business analysts as well. The third type of model is the physical model. It extends and translates the logical model into the physical representation that will be used inside the database. As data types that are available in databases are dependent upon that particular technology, this model is technology dependent. Furthermore, this model considers various other non-functional requirements, such as data security, concurrency, performance, and other factors. These types of models should be prepared by members of the I-team that are responsible for implementing the database, but BAs should be consulted in the preparation of that physical database because BAs understand how the business will be using the data and the information contained within. So just to recap, BAs should prepare conceptual and logical models because they represent business processes and business data and BAs should be consulted in the physical model to ensure that the appropriate data types are chosen. For example, consider customer number. Is it really a number? Is it a series of letters? Is it alphanumeric? The IT team needs to understand what the number is. Maybe it's not really a number at all. That leads me to my opinion on why BAs are great data modelers. BAs understand the business. They know the business stakeholders, they understand the business concepts and the constructs. They understand how the data will be generated, read and analyzed by the business. They understand the relationships between the entities and the cardinality of the relationships. BAs understand the data. So who better to model the data than a business analyst? So there you have it. A quick introduction to what is data modeling, including a demonstration of the process for construction of a model and the concept of cardinality. We've also had a brief discussion on the two types of models, three levels of data models, and a little bit of practical progera perspective on why BAs are great data modelers. It's been my pleasure to share these insights with you today. My name is Stephanie Lockwood-Doucette, and this is Progera. 
the channel dedicated to practical perspectives in business analysis and IT project management. Please take a moment to click that thumbs up icon and subscribe and share this video with your colleagues. They might find some value in it as well. Of course, if you'd like to get your practical perspective direct from me, why don't you connect with me on LinkedIn or follow one of my public pages on Facebook. Also take a moment to visit Progere Academy. On this site, I have a collection of courses that will help aspiring PMs and BAs acquire the skills they need to excel in this dynamic and inspiring career choice. Finally, I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a question or a comment? Leave a note in that section below. Until next time.